Hey, what's going on everybody? I uh, have had a lot of people ask me about the Hackintosh. Um, so, I'm about to show you a video on how to use the iBoot and whatnot for it. This is the after effect of a Hackintosh. Everything's working, as you can see down here, everything's working. Have all that crap. What you're going to want to do is get certain files from certain places um, one of my softwares so you'll want to go to in here put Tony Mac go down to 86 then click I boot multi beast let that boot up here you need to this is all the instructions if you don't if you want to follow with the video and the instructions here everything you need you will need a computer a blank CD the Mac OS Snow Leopard retail DVD to leave any fear at the computer at the door and patience right go down it tells you what you have to change in your BIOS per I understand every uh, every motherboard is different with BIOS but this is just the breakdown of exactly what you need to change take a look at it match it up with certain things like I said everyone's different but there, every single motherboard will be able to change this. If not, that means it's locked and you might have to get a new motherboard. But for a majority of it, you won't have a problem with this. Come down here, the step two, install Mac OS X. So you have three things here. You have iBoot NVIDIA, iBoot ATI, iBoot Supported. iBoot NVIDIA is for your graphics card. If you have an NVIDIA chip graphic card, you're going to want to click this. If you have an ATI, you click this. Supported supports both, plus some extra stuff and all the i3 chips along with these ones. What the only way you can make this Hackintosh work is if you have a Core, a Core 2 Duo, or an i3, i5, or an i7. The only way. So what you're gonna do? Come here, click this. Let's say an NVIDIA one. It's gonna start downloading. You're gonna want to open it up. It's gonna open up to a boot ISO. You're gonna want to burn that to a disc, not as a, not as a, as a just a regular disc. You need to boot it as a bootable ISO. So you just go into your uh, to your uh, Roxio or go into Toast and burn it just as an ISO. Most people use it as data CD. That will not work. It has to be a boot ISO. So you're gonna burn that. Once that's ready, you need to get your uh, Snow Leopard disc ready. You can go to any of your favorite download sites. Get it, make sure it's a copy to a copy, a one for one copy. You cannot need, you cannot use a modified disc. It has to be a da uh, a retail rip or go out and spend the thirty bucks because that's like nothing. That's a couple McDonald's meals, right? Go pick that up and uh, use that. Either way, you're gonna need it. You cannot use a modified. I can't stress that enough. I hear many times people trying to use modified discs. And it just puts them in a big bind that they cannot reverse. Okay, so once that's ready, you're going to want to hop on, you know, get everything ready together. Let's restart the computer. But sure enough, your computer should be off. We're going to restart it. Let it restart. And then I'll show you what to change in BIOS. Yours is going to be different, but this is going to be the gist of what you need. You want to enter your BIOS recovery. So this is my Gigabyte motherboard. You're going to want to get into your settings. Mine's in, I believe, advanced BIOS features. You're going to want to come in here and change your first boot device. Change that to CD. Everything else, leave it the way it is. I changed some of my stuff with full screen and disabled and quick boot. You don't have to worry about any of that crap. Go here to make sure your second boot is your hard drive. Go back. I believe it's in your integrated peripherals. Once again, it might be different for yours. Open it up. You're going to want to change this PC8 SATA control mode from... It would have been IDE, or it might even say SATA. Change it to AHCI. You want to go down here, AHCI. Come out of that. Then you'll want to come to Power Management Setup. Click that. You're going to want to make sure 
Your ACPI suspend type is S3 STR. Come down to HPET support, make sure it's enabled. Go to HPET mode, 64 bit mode. Usually it's set to 32, you're gonna wanna set it to 64. Come out of there, that's all you need in here. You go to save, exit, yes. Before you press yes, put in your boot iOS disk. I'm going to pop in the NVIDIA boot disk. I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of dark. Anyway, so I'm going to pop in this disk into the CD drive. I'm going to close that. I'm going to press enter on the keyboard. Let it go, it's through its thing. You're going to want to do this also, if you notice, with 4 gigs of RAM or less. You don't want to add any more RAM. You need, you don't need, but it's bad to do it with more than 4 gigs. So leave at least 4 in there and nothing more. So first you're going to let it do its thing. It's going to boot from a CD and you'll see the logo that I've been telling you about. You're going to come to this. It's going to say, you know, see this little happy Mac up here and a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo. At this point, eject your CD. and pop in your Snow Leopard disc into your drive. Let that load for about, let's say about 20 seconds until you hear your drive stop spinning. Once that's done, you want to go to your keyboard. There we go. Go to your keyboard and press F5. That's going to boot the CD, and you'll notice these icons here will change. Mine says Hot Pro because I already have it, but you'll see this Mac OS X install DVD. What you want to do is press enter. Now, if you get an error and you get like, you know, a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo up on the screen, you need to press dash X. If you can notice what I just did down here, you'll see something where it says boot dash X and you'll press enter. Since I don't have that issue, I don't have to worry about it. Press enter. And you're gonna wanna let it do its Mac thing. You'll see this little circular thing going, da 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 da, the Apple logo, let it do its thing. I can't stress that enough. Most people, you say, oh, it's not working because it's taking too long, da 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 da, but it will work. Just have patience. This thing isn't just going to work on its own. Okay, so once that all loads up here, you're going to get this dialogue. Use English if this is a main language, if you want, you know, your Dutch or whatever other language you want, go for it. Press this arrow down here, go next, let us do a preparation for the installation. Once this comes up, you'll notice this. The only thing I have to show you up here at the top bar, let me readjust this a little here. Up here on the top bar there, you're going to want to click Utilities. Once you, once you click Utilities up here, it will bring a drop down window. You want to click Disk Utility. Open that up. You should get another window that will pop up. This little window right here, you'll see a little pinwheel go in circle. It's gathering your info, blah, blah, blah. And then you'll see your hard drives. You'll want to click the main one up top. You'll want to go to Partition. Let that open, click this, your little box here, just click anywhere there, go down here towards the plus and minus sign, hit the minus sign, then you'll want to press the plus sign, and then it'll add there, come to apply, and then you're done. You need to exit out of here, then you're going to want to press continue. Agree, 
click your hard drive, go to customize, you're going to want to unclick all this crap. It just slows up your computer to uh, the installation will go a lot quicker. You press OK, you click install, and you go with it. I'm not going to do it because I really don't feel like <laughs> erasing my computer. And then we'll show you what to do once it's all done. So once this is done, you if you picked NVIDIA or ATI, don't sweat at the end of the video, I mean at the end of the installation, it's going to say it didn't install right, blah, blah, blah. Do not worry. It installed perfectly fine. So once that's done, you restart. Then you're going to want to pop in your NVIDIA boot disk or whatever boot disk you picked. You're going to want to pick that, put it back in your drive. Put that back in the drive. Let it do its thing. Okay, so when you do that, you're going to have a new thing to whatever your hard drive was. Mine's Hack Pro. You're going to go over. You don't have to do this every time. Just the first boot, you need that boot disk in there. You go, okay, let it boot up into, uh, into your Mac. It shouldn't take too long, depending on your computer. This is my other Mac Hackintosh. So I don't know if it's that quick, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're back here. Now you're going to have to get your multi beast. You're going to have to get your multi and your multi beast, open that up, double click your PKG and leave that like that. Uh, right now you don't have any internet. So you're going to want to uh, go to continue. Continue. If you read this carefully, you're going to want to uh, run combo update. I didn't show you at the beginning. I'll put it in the video at the very beginning so you have a link just in case if you don't have a second computer to get it. You're going to want to open that up, run that, and you're good to go. Come back to this, press continue, continue, agree, and then you come here. Click Easy Beast, System Utilities, open this up and click Kex. Now here's where all your drivers are. Your audio, you can either go to Voodoo and pick one of the officials, 21 or 22, or you can go your experimental, these ones. Just trial and error, every motherboard's different. Come into your graphics, if you have an NVIDIA, go to Enabler, NVIDIA Enabler. If you have an ATI, come to ATI, there's other things there. Now you come to Network. You go to Real Tech, or if you have an Intel Family Gigabit one, click that. Go to Real Tech if you have one of those, and you click one of these two. Once that's done, click Continue and Continue again. Put in your password or whatever it's going to ask, and let it do its thing. From there, there's nothing else. You'll be able to restart your computer, boot in, and you should be absolutely fine. There should be no problems if there is. It's all trial and error for your Kex. Just keep going. There's nothing I can do for that. If you have any problems, just leave a message on the board underneath and I'll help you as much as I can.